Hey guys, it's Boo from Mile High Distilling. As you all know, we have a lot of supplies here at Mile High. We try to be a one-stop shop for all of your distilling needs. This motive leads us to stock a lot of supplies that have very situational purposes and not a lot of people tend to think about if they need when beginning their distilling journey. So today, we're gonna break down some of the lesser known, you guys can't see me, but I, I put that in air quotes, supplies, and explain a little bit more about what they do in the craft. Let's start it off with yeast energizer. This holds one simple purpose, and that's for energizing stuck fermentations. Consisting of a blend of diammonium sulfate, sprint cell, and magnesium sulfate, if your fermentation is not fully fermented and won't start again, adding about a tablespoon of this will get it perked right back up. Highly recommend, this helps stuck washes. Sparkaloid, this is a clearing agent generally used in wine, but also works well in distilling. As yeast works off your fermentation, it'll begin to die and the dead yeast cells float to the top of the fermentation vessel. If you add a tablespoon of this and hot water into your vessel, leave the vessel unagitated, it should drag all those yeast cells down to the bottom so that you can safely siphon the solution over without carrying over that dead yeast. The biggest perk of this agent is being cheap. It's currently on sale for 99 cents per packet. A packet will treat five to eight gallons of fermentation. I'd highly recommend you pick a few of these up. It costs you a dollar to try them out. What can go wrong there? Okay, so not really a lesser known distilling ingredient, but let's talk about them since they're so important. Enzymes convert starches to sugars. This is important in ingredients that include, but are not limited to, potatoes, bananas, corn, and more. There are many different types of enzymes, but those used most commonly in this craft are an alpha and a beta or gluco enzyme. Alpha is an endoamylase, which means it will attack interior bonds of starch, and the beta is an exoamylase, so that means it'll attack the end of the chains of the starch, and both are used in conjunction with one another for full conversion. Some people will skip the beta since the alpha will do most of the conversion work, but I recommend both. This is a must for anyone working with starchy ingredients like the ones I mentioned. Nutrients, once again, definitely not a lesser known ingredient, but it's an essential one and we wanna talk about it. So most yeast doesn't have the energy to survive in high alcohol environments like the ones we're creating in our fermentation. So adding nutrients helps yeast thrive and it continues to turn the carbon dioxide into alcohol. There are many different types of nutrient and nutrient blends available. These range from diammonium phosphate to blends of minerals to tomato paste as a natural yeast nutrient. If you're using yeast that doesn't already have nutrients in them, such as most turbo yeast strains, this is a requirement to produce a healthy fermentation base. Gypsum. The primary use of gypsum is to correct mineral deficiencies in water. So this takes hard water and turns it soft. For those that don't know, hard water is mineral rich water. Some distillers and brewers actually say hard water can add a lot of characteristics into the fermentation. The best scotch I've ever had was from a home distiller and he used water heavily rich in limestone. It's also said to stabilize pH, provide valuable nutrients to yeast, and in some cases has been said to clear cloudiness if used in small doses. So it's sort of a multi-purpose ingredient. Pectic enzyme, not to be confused with actual pectin, this is an enzyme that is severely healthy for fruits, primarily. I add pectic enzyme to all my fruit mashes. It is very healthy for it. It's made simply of pectinase and dextrose, which is sugar. It promotes strong growth in the wild yeast found naturally in fruit, and is something I highly recommend for anyone working with wine, brandies, fruit shine, anything you can think of with fruit. Citric acid. I wouldn't really call this lesser known either, but not everyone knows about citric acid and really what it does. So even though you've probably eaten something recently with citric acid included in it, you probably don't know what it's used for in distilling. It's found naturally in many different types of fruits, different food items like ketchup, and it serves multiple purposes for our craft. Primarily, distillers use it as a cleaner. Citric acid is incredibly healthy for copper and letting your copper soak in a citric acid bath with a ratio of about one tablespoon of acid to one gallon water for a few hours and then wiping clean will have it looking almost like new. On top of that, citric acid can also be used to increase your pH. So if you're suffering from a low pH balance in your fermentation, it's a natural ingredient that can help. 
pH stabilizer. This works pretty similar to citric acid, except it uses a proprietary blend that actually allows your pH to completely balance to a safe level, whether you're too low or too high. Adding one tablespoon of this agent to about five gallons water will even things out, bring you to a safe 5.2 on that pH scale. That's basic. It's a phosphate-based powder that I always keep around me when fermenting, just in case. PBW, this was patented by Coors Brewing. Shout out to Colorado Brewers. PBW stands for Powder Brewery Wash. It's an extremely effective cleaner. So it can work with hard or soft water and uses, as far as I know, sort of a secret blend of ingredients to be really fast acting, incredibly effective cleaner. Turbo Clear as well as Turbo Carbon. Turbo Clear is the same as Sparkaloid, a clearing agent. This is a silicone based agent and essentially the silicone is heavier than the yeast particulate so over time it's able to drag it down to the bottom of the bucket with its weight. This also degasses the fermentation clearing out sulfides that occur naturally during fermentation. I use this stuff a lot. I'm a huge fan of it. Quick note that the stuff tends to work better for sugar washes and may have trouble with heavier fermentation bases such as ones with grains in them. Uh, Turbo Carbon is designed to remove impurities that are created in your fermentation naturally. Right after pitching yeast, massage the packet and then add to the fermenter. This is definitely a different application than your typical carbon applications which is done post distillation. I don't really find this method as effective as post distillation carbon filtration but it does help your wash or mash come out a little cleaner with less impurities and off flavors when you distill it. Methanol test kit. This is actually a mile high distilling exclusive item that tests for methanol, obviously. You'll pull a sample of your distillate that needs to be tested, fill the vial with it, then use the prepaid shipping label and send over to the lab we use. From there, we'll analyze the distillate and present a graduated curve chart showing your results as far as methanol goes, PPM, parts per million, in your sample. We also provide a guide to help you read the results for your convenience. Methanol is literally found in every single spirit bottle on those shelves at the liquor store. We've used it a lot of times ourselves, always very accurate results. Digital density meter. This is a high-end alcohol and gravity tester that will give you extremely accurate readings on a temperature and alcohol percentage of your distillate. It's connected via Bluetooth. You can use an app to analyze and chart all your readings. It's very easy to use. It's one of the only alcohol testers I found on the market that can actually read distillate with added liquid agents, such as like fruit juice. A lot of the time those other hydrometers and alcohol meters seem to get a little bit funky with their readings when you add different liquids in there that change the weight. So it's a pretty penny, but it's recommended for any distiller that's trying to keep up that professional environment and wants accurate readings. Another twofer, we got refractometers and pH meters. Now most of you are probably familiar with pH meters, so I guess we'll start there. All you're gonna do with this is simply dip the portable pH meter into the included buffer solution, then dip that meter into your fermentation. You're gonna be able to get a highly accurate reading of your pH balance which is so important in distilling. This is extremely easy to use, very high precision, and fits right in your pocket. You can always have it around. Refractometers might be a little lesser known in the distilling world. They're common in the beer brewing industry, but some of you don't come from there. So again, this isn't as important in distilling, but residual sugars will affect the sweetness level and body of your beers, which can, can be a bad thing if they're too high. This is also useful in distilling because this device can tell you if you're using too much sugar in your fermentations. That can end with you cutting costs that you use to like make your mashes in the future. So I think it works regardless of the industry you're in. As a side purpose, it's also a hydrometer. Brew belts. These belts use a temperature sensor probe lined throughout the belt to deliver a blast of heat to your fermenter bucket and keep everything consistently at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 27 degrees Celsius. It wraps around most common fermenters, has an adjustable latch to help get a snug fit onto that bucket of your choice, and plugs into a standard wall socket to deliver consistent heat. I use these quite a lot in the winter. They are an amazing lifesaver for me. 
They saved me a lot of time and effort in having to insulate my buckets. Winter fermentations are really hard around the shop here for us. So these brew belts really just take all that away. For their price, I think it's a complete steal, especially if you're having troubles fermenting in the winter. That's gonna be it for today's video, guys. I just wanted to showcase some of the, again, kind of the sleepers around here, the things not everyone picks up, not everyone knows about here, and just kind of show off their purpose because everything we stock here has some sort of purpose. For whoever made it this far, I wanna thank you so very much for watching. We appreciate all your support. Please leave a comment down below. Let me just know how you like this video or any questions you may have. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you're not already. Don't forget to also look further down below in the description. You can find our TikTok, our Instagram, all that good stuff. Please be sure to follow, like that stuff as well. We'd really appreciate it. Before we leave guys, you know what time it is, boys and girls. But we're not doing a shot this time around. For those that don't know, we started a Cocktail of the Week series. You can find that on YouTube Shorts on our channel, as well as on TikTok. And I'm still reaping the benefits a little bit. I've got a painkiller right here that is just begging to be drinked. So please, guys, if you have a cocktail, or just take a shot with me, whatever you guys got, take one with me. Thank you, guys, once more. It's the perfect summer drink, guys, I swear. Anyways, everyone, thank you once more. We'll see you guys next time.